All right, so here goes the start. So you hear how the sound goes away. And neutral, it comes back. As soon as it goes into drive, it goes away. That's a very nasty sound, and that is inside the transmission. Okay, here we go again. We'll start with simplest of all, disconnecting the negative battery terminal. And once your vehicle's up, get out of here. Take apart the exhaust. On this Suburban, we have this clamp that holds the whole rear exhaust, and then mine. And the Flowmaster, but I've got this little hanger right there holding it. Let's take those two loose, the exhaust comes out. Alright, you can do this whichever way you want. I took the exhaust out first, and then I'm gonna, I got this tub cleaned. I'm gonna drain my fluid and check for metal shavings because there's probably gonna be some in there. Your 6L80 pan should be held with 18 10 millimeter bolts. You need a pan or a tub big enough the entire area of the pan. I think this one is barely big enough. I guess we'll see. So I start at the rear of the pan and then once you once you get mm, about 10 screws off bolts starting from the rear it's gonna start dripping. Uh, make sure you keep one here roughly or any somewhere and then I'll leave this one here in the middle or I'll put another one here to hold the pan up because it is full of fluid and it's heavy. There we go, now we're draining. So, most of the front bolts are out, I've got still, or most of the rear bolts. All right, now it's draining. So most of the rear bolts are out, except that one holding the pan up. Still have the front ones. Can't really let loose when I loosen that one. So just let it drain. This oil or fluid has about 11,000 miles on it. All right, so here it is. This is where it's at. Metal shavings. Metal shavings in the pan. So, you get to this point, and you've got metal like this in the pan, that means it's gotta be rebuilt. All right, so after my fluid's drained, I put my pan back, and then I went ahead and, and put some WD-40 on my exhaust bolts. And then you got these, these four bolts that hold the drive shaft to the rear end and then this will slide out. And if I remember correctly, when the drive shaft comes out, there's gonna be a little bit of fluid loss on there, so put your, your catch can underneath it. You'll need an 11 millimeter wrench for this. And you gonna put your transmission in neutral. And then once you got your four 11 millimeter universal joint bolts out, Separate it from here and then pull it back towards the rear. Make sure you put your your uh, transmission fluid pan underneath that because it's gonna have some oil leak out. And then it's a good habit to get into to any, t any bolt you take off during any time you rebuild them, just put them back. That way you don't lose them. All right, so before I take my cross member out, I've got to pull the exhaust, so. I already had these, these cheap uh, kind of couplings, uh, exhaust couplings. I had to cut this one though, so it's okay. Um, but like this, the exhaust won't come out. I think mine's a 13 16 right here. There's four of them. 
All right, so you can see my exhaust is loose and ready to pull out, but it will not make it through that cross member because well, the transmission blocks it from going out that way, and then that muffler thing, whatever, um, keeps it from coming out this way. So I got to drop the cross member. Now, before I drop my cross member right here, you gotta remember that supports the rear end of the transmission. If you just let it dangle, it's gonna put extra weight on here, which I don't know. Might not be too bad, but I would prefer to support it. So I take my straps. This is just a simple ratchet strap. And I hook them over here on the frame. Then I go above the top of the frame and I take it all the way and I go up. That way this has plenty of room to, to go up and support it. You can see the one that's supporting it is gonna be this one here. So, wrap it around the frame, come back, and then just put tension on it. I also use these ratchet straps to get the transmission down by myself. Okay, good, so now my rear part of my exhaust is out, my cross member's out, and I'm ready to start uh, taking this transmission apart from the engine, taking the lines loose, taking the electrical loose, getting everything disconnected from it, the parking pole, the brackets, everything. Take the starter out again. See, I put my bolts up here, because I don't want to lose them. Good habit. All right, 17 millimeter on the extension takes out the two starter bolts. And then if you want to take your starter out, you just got to unclip. Uh, there's a wire clip that goes in here, and then this one right here comes from the battery. Just loosen those. All right, so now I can access the flex plate and converter bolts. So I'm going to rotate the engine uh, crankshaft with a 15, 16 uh, socket and ratchet. I'm going to rotate around so that I can remove each of the three, all three bolts from the converter. And so it's a lot easier to access the lower part of the front engine if you remove this. This just has four 15 millimeter bolts. Okay, and then you just put your 15 16 on the crankshaft and you turn it. Turn it a little bit at a time until you can see the, the bolt. And so you should be able to use a uh, 5 16 Allen wrench to loosen these. And they should be pretty tight on there. There's three of them on this 5.3 liter and 6L80 2011 Suburban. Or you can use a 15 millimeter on a swivel and your impact. All right, then once your three bolts are out, torque converter is disconnected from the engine. All right, so I'm gonna remove these brackets. I'm gonna remove the oil cooler lines. 13 millimeter for the oil cooler line bolt and then 10 millimeter for this bracket up here so once you got your oil cooler lines disconnected over there come over here to the front and I, I took my bumper off it's really not that hard and you know you want to loosen take these clips out and pull the lines out so they can start venting and uh, and draining in order to do that it's much easier to remove the bottom uh, whatever that thing is called that spans across. There we go, now we got more room to come down with these. These are very easy to lose. So make sure you grab them with your finger. You don't let them fly away. Then as soon as you let air get in the system, then the line starts draining. Ain't that crazy? Now for me, I find it very important to get all the metal out from the entire system, so I take the cooler off, flush it, and then I've also got um, the transmission cooler lines that come into the radiator here. 
I'll try to get it. Anyway, sir. Anyway. So, to flush these lines, you want to take them loose from everywhere they connect to. So, the way it goes is it comes from the transmission up into the bottom of the radiator end, through the radiator end, comes out the top of the radiator end, and into the left side of this cooler, through the cooler, and then out the cooler, and back to the transmission, and that's the flow. All right, so these ones also have uh, those little E-clips. They're underneath these, well, I don't know what those are, little covers or something, but there's an E-clip, and then you got the other one that's down there above that big radiator line. There, that's cut too. So again, don't lose these. They're very hard to replace and find. All right, to get the parking pole off, take a 15 millimeter, okay? But also, get a crescent wrench or something and back it up so that you don't put extra strain on the on the components of the transmission. So you just want to take a crescent wrench, like that perhaps, and with two hands, don't let it, when you're loosening it, you know, back it up and don't let it, don't let it put extra force through the, through that shaft into the transmission. All right, and once it's off, kind of wiggle it off there, put your damn nut back on it, Okay, and then this here comes off by just get this little clip that holds it, push that up with a flathead. Just like so, don't lose it. And then you can do that. Bank. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. And then let's take this harness thing and hide it somewhere. And get it out of the way. Okay. Now I remember from last time uh, that for these lines to be able to move, I've got to loosen this bracket here. That way, I can have some flexibility. Looks like a 13. So there's not really too much left connected to the transmission. Uh, let's see. Look up here. That's pretty much loose. So I'm gonna have to start letting some tension off of this strap. I'm gonna put a second strap up there actually for backup. And I'm gonna start lowering the transmission so that I can reach the upper bolts. All right, so I'm also going to take out the front cross member that's under the engine because I need, I want to come down more with the transmission and I want to have better access. So you see, I got my second strap up, like I said, around the frame. Find a good mounting point to uh, to connect the straps. These ones are different than the others. These are 18 millimeter, uh, both sides. And then once the four are loose, use a uh, pry bar. Just uh, pry it loose, but don't let it fall on you. Okay, there we go. Now I got room to come down with my transmission.
Okay, now that I've lowered it some, I can access and reach all the back bolts if I have enough extensions. All right, so all of these are gonna be 13 and 15 millimeter around the bell housing. You gotta have, uh, you gotta have a few extensions. I don't, I might have enough with that. I don't think I do. I guess we're gonna see. Okay, then once all of your bolts are out and everything is loose, and you're sure that everything is loose, make sure these straps are good and tight. And then, uh, it's ready to go start going down. This is a slow process. All right, so I'm halfway down. You just, uh, you know, go slow with it. Two ratchet straps. This is my little dolly I made out of some casters and some spare wood. And, and really, it's really a piece of cake, you guys. Okay, that's it for pulling it out. It's out now. I can start, uh, taking it apart so hope that helps you figure out how to get this thing out by yourself at home if you need to this time I'm gonna do a, a full video of how I rebuild it and then I'll do another one of putting it back in and getting it all uh, started up and programmed so stay tuned for that uh, thanks for watching